everyone, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about that work plane and those three buttons that you're gonna use a lot. They're in the upper right corner of Revit. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look up here. I've got this house model from a friend of mine that actually is still working on this home, believe it or not. Uh, so we will not say anything about that. Hey Matt, how's it going? You're gonna get your house done at some point? Either way, I did this project back in 2018 and here we are six years later and it's still not finished. So I don't know if I'll keep that in the edit or not, but we'll give it a shot. So anyway, let's talk about your active work plane. Your active work plane is the work plane in which you draw or create or extrude or annotate or model on. It's imagine your invisible uh, notepad in the sky, invisible sketchbook in the sky attached to your model. And when we look at what the work plane is, it's actually very easy to get lost as to where your active work plane is. And so you'll need to familiarize yourself with where your work plane is uh, at any given time. Now, if you look at your sheets, for example, your main floor plan, your active work plane in a floor plan is the plan itself. When you annotate, model, and draw, you're actually creating those elements on the plane of the sheet itself. And so the work plane in this case is the orthogonal view that you're looking at in this view. If you ever want to know what, you know, especially in a floor plan, you're going to be projecting on or drawing on, look down here at your associated level and it'll say main level. In this case, when we draw something, it's going to be on the main level or it's going to be on the main level work plane. So let's take a look at actually changing that work plane in a view. Now I don't recommend changing your work plane in sheet views such as this. And the reason why is because if you change your sheet view in your work plane, sometimes when you intend to draw things, it may have unexpected results. You may be modeling on a surface that you can't quite figure out where it is. And you'll get that error that says none of the elements are visible in this view and you'll get frustrated and you'll yell and we don't want that. So let's take a look at um, doing this in 3D because 3D is really where these tools come in handy. So if I open up this house model and I see this house in 3D, um, let's just assume here for a second that I want to draw or extrude. Let's just place a small uh, box, maybe like a mailbox or a UPS drop box on this deck. Okay. So in this case, we're going to use the first of our work plane tools in the upper right. And that is our show work plane. Okay. Now when we click this button and you can see by the tool tip that drops down, it's going to create a blue gridded plane in space that will show us where this is. So if I click this, and you'll see something over here on the upper left turned blue. Now, all of a sudden, I have a large slice of blue going through my model. And it's a good thing I didn't try and extrude a model in place family on that deck because it would have been glued to this blue plane, which is not what we want. So let's go ahead and go in here and let's create a rectangle on this surface. And notice it is in, it's actually not visible because it's beyond our scope box. But if we were to maybe go into an area where we can see it, you can see as we start to draw, it becomes an eight foot by eight foot box in space. So that doesn't really help us very much. What we want to do is we want to change the work plane and we come to our next tool, which is the set work plane button. Now we can either set the work plane based on a current view, or we can set it based on picking a plane. If we set work plane here, it'll go through this dialogue, which you've probably seen before, which will ask, do you want to set it to a certain grid, a certain level, or something else, a reference plane, uh, maybe a door panel or something. You can pick the plane, which is the same as the green button up here that said pick plane, or you can pick a line and use the work plane it was sketched on. And then that would be handy in this case if I wanted to set my work plane to where that square was that I had out here before. So in this case, I want to set the work plane to level one because I'm going to be drawing a little box out here, a UPS drop box or a, a mailbox on this deck. And I want the work plane to be parallel to the boards of that deck. So let's go ahead and hit set main level. And as soon as I pick main level, the blue plane snaps to the surface of the deck. And now my work plane is set there at the main level. Say I wanna change this again, say actually, whoops, I wanna draw it on the lower level. Let's go ahead and say set, set work plane, lower level. And voila, it is on the lower level. What if I wanna draw something on the side of the building or on a roof? 
And this is critical because quite often you won't model things on perfectly orthogonal up down on these levels. So let's pick a level. So we're going to pick a plane PK and we're going to pick the side of the house here. And as we zoom in, we'll notice our blue plane is now glued and cropped to the plane that we've selected. Because that wall is only a certain height, a certain length, and a certain depth, it actually put our blue plane trimmed to that space. Now, if we go pick a plane, we can save a step and just say, pick a plane I want on the back of the garage here, and it'll snap there. In which case, now that we have that there, what can we do? We can draw, we can do a new model in place family, Let's just say maybe we're doing a door modeled on the back of this garage. We'll just call it that for now, for an example. When we do an extrusion, it will want to be on that plane. We'll trim that up and not sure what this would be, but as it extrudes vertically, your depth is set based on that work plane. So let's go ahead and delete that. Now, what if you wanna do something really crazy? What if you wanna go on the slope? of the roof. Let's just say we want to set our work plane on the slope and we'll cancel this model for now because we're not going to do this extrusion. To find those tools, just go to your architecture tab and they're on the far right, unless you've moved them somewhere else. If we go set and we say pick a plane, we can actually pick the slope of this roof. Notice how it highlights in blue as I hover over it and I can select this plane and now my work plane is glued to that roof. Notice how it's not at a perfect angle. I am able to select that and rotate that. You can drag it to either the snap points of the reference plane or of whatever's on the roof. In this case, we'll do snap points of the reference plane. We'll select an orthogonal line and we'll rotate that down so it's nearly vertical. Uh, again, I don't know, unless you're trying to align this to your slope surface, I don't find it usually too helpful to do this because you're going to align uh, your drawing or your extrusions off of other elements. Say we've got our plane here and we want to create another extrusion. So let's go architecture, model in place, and let's do a mechanical equipment on the roof. And let's do our rectangular extrusion. And now observe, we're able to actually draw our piece of equipment on that plane. And as we extrude it out, it is now sitting at the slope that. Um, notice that we started our extrusion at eight, we'll start at zero, and it, zero is the start of that reference plane. So that's how we create elements that are at an angle. The last thing we'll show in this group of tools is the viewer. I don't really ever use the work plane viewer. It's something I've used maybe two or three times in my long career. But if you click on this, it will open up another window that shows a bit of a reference, doesn't interfere with the view that you're in now, but you can zoom in and out, rotate around in 3D and see it in a different view in case you wanted to possibly look at this from a different angle. I do know folks that when they open up the 3D view, they can actually just pop open the work plane viewer and see where it is before they start modeling. So this might be handy to you, but um, I don't really use the work plane viewer very much. So in a nutshell, that's work planes. I'm going to show you one more thing on a commercial project, which makes this very handy, which you might be able to use for roof insulation and slope lines. All right. So one more thing I want to show, this is a small retail shop for the firm that I'm working for now. And one thing that's interesting here that a practical use of the work plane features is on a flat sloped roof. Now, this is a quarter inch per foot sloped roof. It's a single slope. It drains to the um, west side of the building, which is to the bottom right in this view. And what we've done in this case is actually created our roof insulation split lines on the roof plane itself. But remember the roof slopes. So let me give you an example. So I've gone ahead and erased the existing slope lines and I'm going to instead of breaking this roof and sloping the insulation as a model, sometimes it's quicker just to show this in a plan view. It's a simple enough tapered cricketed insulation that you don't really need to get too complex with how the roof breaks back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my roof plan and I go here and I, I realize I've got some stuff in the way here. I want to turn off my Revit links of my, first of all, Let's get my um, let's get my template off, and then I want to turn off the Revit links for this detailed structure. If I were to go into here and start drawing the four slope lines that you saw previously, architecture, model line, 
let's do very thin lines. I'm gonna start at this uh, roof drain and I'm gonna go diagonally at 45. And the reason why is because per the IBC, all flat roofs must slope at a quarter inch per foot minimum. And so if I'm minimum sloping my main roof and minimum sloping my cricketing at a quarter inch, it generates a 45 degree line. And then if I draw this one at a 45 degree line, and then just to show you, I have another roof drain over here. We're gonna intersect those. And then we will do one more roof line and we will go straight down to the south. Now we have two breaks that show that 45 degree slope. However, if I were to look at this in 3D, what you'll notice is that these lines are hovering in, in the air above. And the reason why is because remember what I said earlier, in a view, in a roof plan or a plan view, your work plane is equal to the level at which the roof plan was cut at. So in this case, these lines are sitting flat in space. They're not attached to my roof at all. You can see them, they're up in the air here, right? And this doesn't look good at all, especially for people that are working on the model. What I want is for these roof lines, these break lines to sit on the roof itself. So I can do that in two ways. I can go in and I can actually say architecture set and I'm going to pick a plane and I'm going to pick this roof. If I pick that roof, now anything else I draw on this roof will be on that sloped line. And you'll see that in model line. If I draw this, if I rotate this view around, you can see that line is, is glued. It's here, it's, it's glued to that roof surface. It's not moving. The other thing I can do is I can erase these lines and I can start over in that work plane by going to roof plan. I'm going to set my work plane in this view. Remember how I said, be careful setting your work plane in certain views because it could throw off what you're drawing on. So I'm going to say, pick a plane. I'm going to select that roof, it turns blue. After I select it, doesn't seem like anything has happened, but if I draw a model line here now, and I go 45, 45, and again, 45. And just for good measure, we will do that last line straight down. Now those lines are on the roof itself. You can see how they're attached to the roof plane itself. That's what the benefit of drawing on a plan with a work plane that is slightly different than the orthogonal level of the plan. Just make sure to go back to this plan, either show or use your viewer to see where that roof plane is in 3D space. You can see in the viewer, this is handy, the viewer will show you really quickly that it does appear like it's on a slope and then go back to set work plane and pick roof level. In this case, it was high parapet because you can see it's over here on the associated level at high parapet. So we'll set that there, we'll hit okay. We can check that one more time by going to our viewer and yep, looks orthogonal to me. So, so yet another way you can use the work plane tools while you're in a plan view to achieve some results that you wouldn't already get. In working in roofs, flat roofs, I do this all the time, almost every day, is work on projects that have flat roofs. And so it's a handy way, if you don't wanna go in and try to tweak that roof, get those points pulled, have brake lines unpredictable, to just draw these as model lines, they'll show up in every view, and then you can just annotate your slopes. It's a little bit of a cheat, but it's a good way to show roofs without getting too detailed in them. And that's it for our quick tutorial on using the work plane tools. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, be sure to subscribe. Thank you to all my subscribers that are out there. Really appreciate all of you subscribing, and we'll see you next time.